Oh, um, I completely forgot to do this review. I was so fucking busy. It was a busy weekend. And the thing that sucks the most is that next week is going to be just as busy. Even though the review will probably be up earlier. Uh, so this show kicked off with Josh Matthews' music playing as Pope and JB were welcoming us to the show. And Josh comes out with Raphael, who I thought was like an anthem. Apparently, he's his lawyer now. And a bunch of security. And he's like, JB, you've been suspended for hitting me. And JB's like, what the hell? So they suspend JB, and they put Josh on the commentary table. What the hell? Uh, you guys know how I feel about this. Listen, I don't care if you like Josh Matthews, all right? But if he's gone... What the fuck was the point of having that match? Especially since everybody in JB's team turned heel, but whatever. So yeah, JB and Pope are calling. No, Josh and Pope are calling. JB's out. Um, and then Trevor Lee comes out uh, to wrestle. He's with Gregory Shane Helms. And then... Doo -doo -doo -doo, I am the ancient warrior, man. Matt Seidel makes his debut in the Impact Zone. Matt Seidel... Looking awesome as fuck. I was marking the hell out when he came out, bro. I've been excited to see. I heard he was coming in. And I've been excited to see him. He defeated uh, Trevor Lee with uh, Bearborn. Uh, that was really fun to watch. I'm, I'm happy he's in the impact zone. And apparently he's got a match coming up with Eddie Edwards. I can't wait to see that. that that's going to be off the chain. You know what I'm saying? Um, After that, EC3 came out. Um, Sienna wants to meet the GFW woman champion, but EC3 comes out to address the new regime. And he talked about how he was world champion and how, uh, he can't, he doesn't like the new regime because they keep pushing him to the side and how James Storm, he was undefeated and James Storm's a loser and all that. Uh, and he's talking shit about like the new, the new people in power. Um, James Storm came out and tried to fight EC3, but EC3 doesn't want nothing to do with him. And he's like, I'm a better man than this. I won't fight you. I'll fight you on my terms. And James Storm's like, you know something? Aunt Dixie ain't here to help you no more. EC3, your name should be EC, bitch. And EC3 snaps and runs in the ring, and they start brawling. Um, I can't wait to see them get it on. They're probably going to get it on at some anniversary, which was going to be cool because you guys know the history of EC3 and TNA. And, of course, James Storm, the last outlaw, the man that's been there since day one. Uh, this stupid skit of, of KM eating at a restaurant. Some waiter is like, did you like the food? He's like, get out of my face. Don't call me no fucking liar. I don't know. Don't call me no weirdo. What the hell? That was stupid. I didn't like that. Um, so Christina Von Erie is the GFW Women's Champion. She had it for two years. I remember when she won it. And uh, she looks different. She was toxin. She looks different, but she still looks good. Uh, and she's like, I want to get it on with the women in this company, the competition. And I want to be GLW's champion for a long time, you know? So she comes out. They fucking, they didn't show Ava Story's entrance. That's so fucking stupid that they did that. Ava Story's fucking gorgeous. Um, young, 20 years old. Um, oh my God. I guess I'll talk about this. I, I, I found an article about Ava Story on Wrestling Forum, right? Beautiful woman like Ava Story. Beautiful eyes. And the only thing, there was like about five, six comments. It was just a bunch of smarts talking about how she sucks in the ring. Okay. If there's a hot girl, whether she can talk or fight is irrelevant, okay? Obviously, she wanted to be a wrestler, so let her fucking wrestle. That's for anybody, not whatever. And then they started trashing on, on Christina and all that. Fuck them. Uh, I love Ava Story, but Christina Von Erie defeated her. And apparently she's got a match with Sienna next week. You know? Nice. Swaggle was shaking hands with people in the impact zone. And he was fucking with uh, Rockstar Spud. It was kind of funny. Uh, Loki came out and said, uh, I'm, I'm the, the X Division champion. And all you people want to take this belt from me. Come at me, bro. I'm coming. Loki's cool. I love Loki. Loki's the man. Uh... Alberto El Patron was being interviewed by McKenzie, and he wants to be world champion, but Magnus came out like, you go on the back of the line. And then they started, like, arguing, because Magnus is a GFW champion. And uh, 
like I said, Dixie, Karen Jarrett gets in the middle, like, you guys get it on, not next week, but the week after. Stupid. Why are we waiting two weeks? But this should be good. And I like both of these guys, though. I'm, I'm going to pull for Alberto, though. Um, then we had Moose versus Davey Richards for the uh, the the Grand Impact title. The Impact Grand title. After a year, I'm still calling it that. I'm fucking stupid. So they got it on. Um, and I'm so excited to see Angelina Love and Moose the next month. Oh, excuse me. It's this month. Yeah, it's in two weeks, brother. Not even. It's a week from this Saturday. Um, And Davey looks so stupid fighting a big man like Moose. He's a little guy in his underwear and he's fighting a big powerhouse. Moose comes out with two of his basketball, I mean, football friends, his football players. They probably came out with him at, at, at Bound for Glory. Uh, they're kicking each other's ass, but Moose is dominating him. Eddie Edwards runs out and just, like, attacks uh, Davey. And the match is like a no contest. Davey gets taken to the back. And then Eddie starts talking shit to uh, Moose's friends. So one of them, like, pie faces the shit out of Davey. And the other guy picks up Davey and power slams him because he's a fucking midget. And a football star can pick him up like that. So that was pretty cool. Uh, they, they embarrassed him. And Twaggle once again was trolling uh, uh, Spud. He ripped up his format and shit. So Spud got fucking mad. He said, get away from me. Keep away from me. And he ripped he ripped his pants. He ripped Swaggle's pants right off. Uh, funny. Uh, there was this jobber, Matt Sigmund, I think his name was. And uh, Congo Kong squashed the shit out of him. Um, of course, Congo comes out with uh, Laura Vanessa and KM and Sienna. This guy, I like Congo Kong. I've seen some matches of his before he came to Impact. Uh, what are they going to do with him, though? Like, world title chase? Like, what are they going to do with him? Because this new stable ain't doing it. And I don't know why they have KM in there, but whatever. Uh, now, this was good. The Veterans of War debuted against my boy Fala Ba. And his tag team partner, uh, Mario. Uh, the veterans of war are really good. I, I heard of Wilcox. Uh, Jax Dane. I've heard of him. Mayweather is Crimson. And I loved Crimson in 2011. He was my homeboy. Um, these two uh, did really good together. A lot of people thought when these Vignats were showing that Mayweather's partner was going to be Gunner Phil Shatter. Um, I thought so, too, and I thought that they would have even been a good tag team back then when they were in TNA, when Immortal was around, but uh, Wilcox is a veteran of war, Mayweather is a veteran of war. They defeated uh, Mario and Falaba, and they cut a promo talking about how they served in the military and that they wanted the Impact Tag Team Championships, and I support them. Every, the crowd was into them, too, because they're, they're heroes, you know. Uh, for some reason, uh, uh, Swaggle came out with no pants on with, like, a dress and just started beating the shit out of Spud with a, with a, with a hammer. It's like, ah, 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 like, and then uh, Swaggle's like, bam, bam, he's beating him up, like, he's, like, destroying him, like, 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 you guys know that video where that kid destroyed the dollar store and the guy was like, hey, shit, yeah, I'll put that link in the description if I remember. Swaggle's just beating the shit out of him and then, like, people are trying to break them, break him up. From Spud saying, leave him alone. And Swaggle's like, like threatening, like, I'm not afraid to do it. Get back to the referees. Swaggle's like swinging the hammer at uh, Josh and uh, Pope. And Swaggle leaves. And I guess he's just mad. I don't know if this is a heel turn or he's just mad that Spud ripped his pants. Uh, Spud, I prefer Spud as a manager, but if they want to keep him as a ring announcer, that's fine. Wrestling, uh, no thank you. Uh, Eli Drake was pissed because he said that uh, last week was a live show and he wasn't there. Him and Tyrus are frustrated. And Eli Drake says the time people start taking me seriously around here. I think the ship is sealed, but I, I know a lot of you want him to be pushed. So, And that sucks because I loved him when he was Sean Ricker. I could do a video about that. I think I did. But yeah, the main event, Decay in a street fight, challenging LAX for the Impact Tag Team Championships in a street fight. This was the Decay's last match together. And I could have, it, it was Crazy Steve's last match in Impact Wrestling. Um, Crazy Steve has entertained us for three years. Decay has entertained us for over a year. LAX was cheating. I know they cut a promo last week that was kind of a heel promo. But whatever it was, it sparked the crowd because they were getting booed massively. And people were cheering for LAX. Um, I can't say this about Rosemary and Abyss, but Crazy Steve was being a babyface. He was like, what's going on? Because they took out the referee. And stuff like that. Um, they the LAX uh, 
Rosemary, they had her spit the mist in abyss, and then they speared abyss in the barbed wire table. And then, uh, well, it could have been a regular table. And uh, the referee got taken out, and Steve's like, what the hell? He's trying to cover one of the guys. And then Diamante, Homicide, Conan, they all get involved. And then they take out Crazy Steve, right? And then Santana and E. Ortiz pick up Crazy Steve and do a doomsday device on him right through a table. I think there was tax on the floor, but they pinned him. Um, great way for him to go out. Um, the crowd was booing LAX, and LAX is like Latin nation for life, and that was it. It looks like LAX are turned heel officially, and uh, they're probably gonna feud with the veterans of war, which would be good because Conan on the microphone, his anti-American promos are off the chain. Uh, but I I'm excited as hell for that, and the road to stop anniversary has officially begun. The show was literally two months from today, but. A lot can happen in two months, right? But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I apologize that it's late. I'm going to miss the decay, and I'm sure a lot of you will. Thank you, Crazy Steve. You, I heard you might be going to WWE. If, if so, I hope you're used right. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait for next week's episode. So take it easy, everybody. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Happy May. Let's do this.